Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for September 5th, 2024. Well, I hope everyone had a great afternoon and evening, ready for another wild day in the market. How about we take a look quickly at what happened overnight? First, Asian markets last night mostly lower with Australia and Shanghai, uh, just slightly higher over there in Shanghai, $4.04. Um, Australian markets were up um, 31 and 90, but pretty much everything else was looking a little bit on the bearish side. Um, interesting thing, Hong Kong uh, finished down, but only by 0.07%. So some of the selling in tech may be slowing down. If we take a look at European markets this morning, European markets are also mostly lower with the FTSE slightly lower at uh, down 0.12%, the CAC down 0.63%, and the DAX is up 0.09% as we're waiting on all of the data that we have coming our way uh, today. If we take a look at U.S. futures, pretty modest here as well this morning. Dow futures up 0.08%, S&P futures up 0.06%, and NASDAQ futures down 0.05% on the morning. If we were to take a look at oil, let's take a look at um, XLE. XLE had a pretty rough couple of days here this week, pulling back hard as we're starting to see real concerns about demand here, um, not, not only in the United States, but in other countries around the world, particularly China, as economies continue to show weakness. So if we take a look here at XLE, obviously we've been pushing back pretty hard um, in a downtrend. And boy, we haven't seen prices like this in oil for a while. Um, oil futures right now down, or excuse me, up 20 cents at 69.40 a barrel, below 70. Uh, Brent crude is up 32 cents at 73. 02 a barrel. Natural gas this morning um, is just ever so slightly lower and down um, about, well, less than a cent um, after pulling back yesterday. Still trying to hold that W bottom or double bottom pattern in here, but um, feeling just a little bit of pressure here as we continue to see that demand destruction. If we were to take a look at bond prices here this morning, bond prices have pulled back just, just a slight bit on the two year to 3.77%, the 10 year at 3.77%. So we're um, the inversion, we are flat on the two tens this morning. Uh, the 30 year at 4.07%. We're even seeing the very short term bonds pulling back to 5.07%. So kind of an interesting uh, change here um, um, as we continue to get all of these data points showing that our economy is weakening. If we take a look at gold this morning, uh, gold, silver, um, um, looking substantially higher here this morning, uh, really reversing, pushing to the upside with gold right now up $18.40 an ounce in the futures. Silver is also up this morning um, substantially about 45 uh, cents. So keep an eye on that. We've got copper up this morning. Um, FCX has been looking pretty pretty ugly, however. SCCO on the copper side of things. Although copper is moving up slightly this morning, it's not helping some of these uh, miners out there. Platinum is up and palladium is reversing a couple of bad days here this morning, just slightly higher this morning. Let's take a look at uh, the crypto markets now. Crypto's feeling a little bit under pressure here this morning. If we take a look at BITO, Bitcoin, a little bit down. Um, it, we had a push up yesterday, but this morning we've got 
Bitcoin, let's see, at this moment, down $1,172 a coin, um, um, over 2%. Ether is also down more than 2%. So pretty um, rough start to the day on those crypto markets as that volatility in these it just continues to be extremely wild. So what does all that mean for the day? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Thursday edition of the Morning Market video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. I very much appreciate it. Hey, I want to let you know that there will be no blog today. I apologize. I've mentioned this before. I do so much in the morning that if I have one thing go wrong, um, well, I can't get it all done. And I did have one thing go wrong this morning uh, with a, as I was um, finishing up um, with the blog. Um, I had a power blink and I, well, I lost the entire blog. So no blog this morning. Um, I do apologize, but we'll get through this uh, video here today and I should be able to get it out on time or just slightly late. So let's take a look at these um, index charts, see if we can gain a little bit of information about how we might want to approach the market for today. And remember, shake off that bias. We want to look at the charts for what they are not for what we want them to be. So if I put my drawings on here, you can see the diamonds pulling back in the chart, but there is nothing bad here um, at the moment. We pulled back into here, found a little bit of price support yesterday, tried to hold on um, a bit of an inverted hammer type pattern here can sometimes mean um, um, uh, an upside move may be on the way, a little bit of relief may be on the way, but we've got so much data today, I think it's going to be pretty hard to suggest um, uh, that is going to occur until we get through uh, the reactions of some of this morning's data. So if we take a look in here, this is a really good hold, at least so far, in the diamonds holding right along that trend, holding in that price support. If the bulls were to find inspiration here today, I'm going to draw a line right across there and suggest that's going to be uh, the place we're going to need to test and a push back up. We're going to need to see if we can pop through there. And if we can pop through there, then I think there's every reason to believe we could stretch right back on up here and retest those all-time highs in the diamonds if they can pop through there of course blue sky above now on the opposite side if the bears were to find inspiration in that data today then a push down here wouldn't be all that hard to envision pushing down breaking through these tails right down in here would probably raise a little bit of concern and drop us maybe into this area of price support in the chart. Now this price support in the chart, not so strong um, in, that, in that area. So failing through that area right in here, I would suggest that we could pretty easily start slipping down into these areas of the chart. And remember, we still have this gap down here that could eventually be filled if we pull back. Remember, um, everyone, Diamonds is still quite elevated away from its 50-day moving average, so we can't rule out the possibility of any pullback. We would come back into a test into that 50-day moving average, and if you look at that price action, that's going to bring us back down into that gap that I pointed out. If we take a look at our SPY, SPY, well, a little bit of pressure here on this. Um, as you can see, we broke that support on Tuesday uh, pulling us back and we didn't really get a whole uh, lot of love in there yesterday to push that back up. So um, right in here we caught that little bit of support trying to hold before dropping into the gap and again kind of that inverted pattern here that might give us a little hope of a, um, some relief to the upside and you can see we're trying to push up here. So if the bulls can find inspiration today 
we need to see if we can break back through into that resistance area of the chart see if we can pop back up and remember if we can do that we've got all of this consolidating um, bottom here that we're going to have to also test see if we can break through before reaching up in here into these pretty substantial areas of price resistance in the chart um, remember if we can get back up through here we may have that chance of finally making an all-time high in the SPY and I know they really want that to happen um, that helps them um, draw more money into the market if we could get that breakout um, to occur if the bears however were to find inspiration um, right in here sitting on the edge of that little cliff we could fall into this gap here as you can see and falling into that gap could move us relatively quickly down into this area area of price support so if those bears were to were to find reason to engage uh, this morning we have a little bit of danger here on the spy to be paying attention to that would be a fairly big move to fill that gap beyond that point i would suggest that the market's going to feel some considerable considerable fear uh coming up um, if we were to fall into that area we might catch some support in here in here notice there's another little gap in here that we could fill if those bears were to really get going to the downside remember um, we are trying to hold on to that 50-day moving average so that gives that little bit of edge to the bulls as well we've got that little moving average squeeze right in here trying to provide that support um, for the spy so um, if the bulls can hold on to that, we're, we're golden. If the bears push down through there, that's where we're going to have a little bit of concern coming up here in the market. Now our QQQ, we've already made that decision. We broke that 50-day moving average, pushing down here in the chart. And now we've got all of those moving averages above us as a potential resistance area in the chart. So if those bulls were to find inspiration today, first thing we need to do, I think, is we need to break back up into here um, see if we can um, get through um, uh, yesterday's high in the QQQ and then we might have that opportunity we could push back up and test some of this resistance in the chart and then up into this bigger area of price resistance in QQQ. Now breaking through there would be uh, certainly possible with some really good data but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge with all that resistance and then we might start reaching up into this area dealing with some of this consolidation in the chart. Uh, that'd be a big move, certainly possible um, um, with the, the NASDAQ we know how that can shift and move around pretty quickly so watch that carefully now on the bearish side if the bears were to get going here on the chart and you can see holding this little area of price support in here well we've got a little bit further down and we've got a little gap in here that could be filled if those bears were to get going and then pushing on down into this little bit a more stable bigger area of price support if they were to get uh, really pushing to the downside now pushing down that far all at once that could raise some fear because we're already below that 50-day moving average and that means we could start extending down pretty easily notice we've got a good area of price support right in here that could try to hold but if that were to fail I'm suggesting we would come all the way back down into this area um, of that congestion area in IWM. Um, so watch that closely. And then if we look at our Russell IWM, IWM pulling back here again yesterday just ever so slightly it tried to move up. If the bulls find inspiration here on the Russell I would say right up in here would be um, a good place to test to see if we can punch on through. If we do punch on through that, I'm going to suggest coming up into here and then that next level would be right up in here. Of course, past that point, we're breaking these re recent resistance highs and then we have that opportunity that we could attack up in here. If the bears were to find inspiration today, well, it wouldn't be all that big of a stretch to see that possibility that we could start dipping down 
into this area and realizing that there is a gap in here as well in um, IWM and that possibility that we could start slipping back down into that gap. Now, you wanna pay attention in here that there is a bit of an upside trend right in here. So a pullback into here may not be as critical as it might look. Um, we might find some good support and that upside trend in here uh, for IWM. And then looking at those moving averages, again, we've got the 50 day moving average and a little bit of a moving average squeeze in favor of those bulls if they can hold that area of price support. Let's take a look at our VIX. Our VIX yesterday pushing up, as you can see, um, and then um, trying to reverse, but we ended up closing at a higher high yesterday on the VIX, just a little bit higher in that chart. So as I've mentioned before, our concern here in this is, is this area right up here, that's our next area of potential price resistance right underneath this area. So if those bears were to find that engagement here, pushing up in there, let, let's watch that resistance there. If they push beyond that, there's a little area right in here where we've got a little bit of price action data that may suggest some resistance in the chart. And then of course, we're probably looking at that big spike back up here to retest some of those highs that we have seen recently. If the bear, excuse me, bulls find that inspiration, well, pulling back into here would be very logical. Coming back to test this support here in the chart would be very logical. Beyond that point, probably the underneath side of that is what we would catch for a little bit of uh, price support in the VIX. Remember, the real scary thing with the VIX is when we make a higher low. As you can see right in here, I've suggested over and over again, it's not that first move up that's a worrisome thing or all that worrisome it's when we find that fear beyond that and we push up so here we've pushed higher in this move if this holds a higher low that's where the real selling can begin so watch that carefully here in our vix if we take a look at our t20s our T2122 indicator, well, we had a nice relief in here. So pulling back, and you can see we got this little hook in here, giving us that, that hope that we might see those bulls kind of come back and provide some energy here in the market for that push back higher. We were we bounced around in here quite a bit, but ended up closing, you know, about 56%. So if those bulls find inspiration here today, you know we've opened up a pretty good opportunity for a relief rally back to the upside, a nice little push in there. So we've got plenty of room for that. We've got just a little bit more space. If the bears, however, were to find inspiration to continue pushing this back down. So kind of equal weight in here on T2122. T2108, well, that T2108 just didn't do all that well yesterday. Continued to push down, uh, falling below the 50% area here just slightly. But if there's some hope here, notice we've got this little hook starting to show in here and that possibility that those bulls will catch and pick back up and push us back up. Now, keeping in mind as we do that, we're gonna come into some resistance areas. So it really is gonna come down to how much momentum, how much breadth we have in the market. If we were to continue to fail in here um, and push on lower, if the bears were to be inspired, well, just note we've got some pretty good areas of price support in here we may not have that situation where we plunge all the way back down our uh, t2107 t2107 very much the same thing good news here is we still held well above our 50 percent area the percentage of stocks above the 200 but and you can see we've got a little bit of price support right in here and once again that little bit of a hook um, here showing us that opportunity that that could push back to the upside, keeping in mind we've got pretty good resistance areas up there as well. And then our T2101, this is where it's all gonna be, um, I think today is where that momentum comes in. You can see we still saw that momentum fading back here on the breadth 
yesterday. It just couldn't get her going here with some of the data that we're waiting on. And as you can see, pushing on back down. But if those bulls can find that inspiration here today, um, in some of the data, perhaps we start turning that back up. Remember, we still have some time um, in those corporate buybacks um, to really re-engage here back to the upside. Today might be the day that we could see that occur. What you don't want to see is if those bears were to engage and we see that breadth increasing on that bearish wave. If you're a bull, you don't want to see that because that means those bears are becoming emboldened and they um, they get a little feisty when um, they see that opening so watch that carefully let's take a look at our um, economic calendar here for this morning in our economic calendar we do have a few things that we'll want to be paying attention to because we have a pretty busy morning on that economic calendar. Oops, sorry, I didn't have that ready. If um, we take a look at that calendar this morning, as you can see, we've got a lot going on in here. We've got an ADP report. Uh, first, that challenger job cut report in here. We've got an ADP report, and they're looking for 140,000 on um, those private payrolls. That's an increase. And, that's gonna make it difficult or continue to make it difficult if we see those jobs holding in there, those jobs numbers holding in there strong. So watch that carefully here today. Then we've got jobless claims looking for 230,000. That's a little improvement over last time at 231. Once again, I keep thinking uh, with some of the numbers we've been seeing, we're likely to see this jump up here one of these days. You never know exactly how the market is going to um, adjust to that or feel about that. So watch that closely. Um, we've got productivity and cost numbers here. They're looking for productivity to increase by one tenth from a 0.3 to 0.4 and you know, labor costs going down by a tenth to 0.8, which would be bullish for the market. After that, we've got a PMI composite final. They're looking at that PMI coming in just a little bit lower than the past read from 54.3 to 54.1 and services coming in just slightly higher, 55.2 over uh, the 55 reading in the PMI. Um, ISM services, they're looking for that to decline just a little bit as well from 51.4 to 51.1. So watch those carefully. Um, we've got uh, petroleum status uh, um, uh, in here along with a natural gas report. Um, so busy, busy day on the economic calendar along with some bond auctions, treasury buyback results, and of course, Fed balance sheet here at the end of the day that nobody likely going to pay attention to. Remember, there's probably going to be a little bit of uncertainty about how this number, the employment situation number, is going to come out here on Friday. So we will soon be thinking about that. We get through this data. Um, don't be too surprised if we end up with kind of a choppy afternoon just waiting on that number. We're also going to hear from Williams and Waller and a Baker Hughes rig count on Friday. Let's take a look at our um, earnings calendar here for today. And our earnings, well, since there is no blog, I'm going to run through these really quick um, here this morning. Not too many of those earnings to be paying attention to, but we've got um, KFY that we'll be reporting this morning. So keep an eye on that. We're going to have NIO reporting this morning. SAIC, my fingers don't want to work this morning as well. Um, SAIC, um, SCVL, and TTC uh, for the notables here this morning. This afternoon, our most no notable is going to be Broadcom. Um, AVGO will be reporting. We've got AGX, BRZE that will be reporting. DOCU, another pretty substantial notable to be paying attention to. DWRE. 
SMAR, SWBI, PATH, MDRX, and ZUMZ. So those are your notables for th this afternoon. Um, let's take a look at a few stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, everyone, if you can do me this quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you find these videos to be useful or helpful, do me that favor. Click that thumbs up button, leave a brief comment. That helps the channel to continue to grow. I apologize I didn't get a chance to answer those comments yesterday. I will be back on task today getting those um, answered. So thank you, everyone. I do truly appreciate it. Um, taking a look at some of these stocks that could be setting up, remember, everyone, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. You need to do your own due diligence. Be very, very careful. Never blindly follow anyone else's trade ideas. Follow your rules, your guidelines, and always make sure you're following your personal risk tolerances. Let's take a look in here. If we take a look at uh, Juniper, another chart that um, I've placed an alert on this entire lineup here is an alert. Nice little consolidation. You can see how Juniper has been moving. We move up pretty sharply and then we rest a long period of time. Um, and we just seem to be stepping up um, in this chart. If we look across here in Juniper, we've got I'm going to pull this all the way back to a weekly. We've got um, um, some resistance up here to be dealing with, and this is a multi-year resistance. So you can see if Juniper were able to break through there, there could be some good upside potential in that chart. So keep an eye on Juniper worth paying attention to. Um, as you guys know, I've been keeping an eye here on Federal Express. FedEx in this nice little tight consolidation here had a little bit of bearishness here just recently. We tried on uh, yesterday to push up and trigger that alert and just couldn't quite make it. And then those sellers came back in, but let's watch carefully if we can get that bullish inspiration here. We might find that upside trend here soon and be looking for that upside to come in that chart. You know, I got to continue to mention uh, the the stocks that are in that uh, conservative area of the market, the uh, consumer defensive um, area continue to show lots of strength and showing us that folks might be running to a little bit of safety. There may also be some institutional rotation happening here to a little bit of safety in the market. So nice pop here on PepsiCo breaking through my alert. Now with a little rest or pullback, setting up an opportunity here for the upside. You know, we continue to see things like Coke just doing a really good job to the upside. Now yesterday it took a little bit of rest. It needs probably a bit of consolidation or rest after such a move to the upside. But everywhere I look in those defensive sector stocks, there are some good patterns. Take a, they don't get much more boring than Clorox. And look at this thing. Clorox just racing up as I think um, everyone is looking for that safety of those dividends um, in the market. Telecom is doing some of the same things. Um, now I have a bias here. I've been holding um, AT&T. Just have a beautiful profit in this that made about 50% profit yesterday. And as you can see, uh, continuing to run in this upside side trend. Now I would watch for a little rest or pullback to occur in here at any time, but that safety play sure seems to be um, um, engaged here pretty strongly. Things like uh, Mondelez, um, big stretch yesterday to the upside any rest or pullback look for an opportunity that's a big break of the downtrend pushing some resistance levels up here in that chart worth keeping an eye on uh, things like um, uh, schmuckers big rally here still banging its head against resistance not really ready for prime time in my opinion got to get through that resistance but certainly a big change in these old boring companies take a look at um, constellation 
brands breaking through that downtrend here in that big push running into some resistance so any rest or pullback in here would set up that higher low and that opportunity for that to move to the upside so watch those pretty closely other places um, i've been watching uh, levi strauss here this nice little tight consolidation in here and what's interesting to me on this if this does pop you notice we've got a little bit of resistance right there to get through and then we have this big upside gap that could potentially be filled so keep an eye on levi looking pretty good in there um, caterpillar caterpillar going the other direction pretty strong move we're seeing some of those industrials that were trying to get things going and now showing some pretty big weakness here uh, breaking down and losing a little bit of price support in that chart. Um, I'd keep a close eye on this. If this were to continue to extend down, there could be some major problems in this. But with the way the market has acted, we could certainly swing this right back above that support area in the chart, proof to hold. So keep an eye. I don't think it's worth throwing this one quite out yet. And if we look at some of the other, you know, big um, equipment makers like John Deere, John Deere um, still trying to lift to the upside. So breaking through this resistance there in John Deere is something definitely worth paying attention to and if we can find that way to hold right in here then i would look for that next opportunity off that trend for uh john deere to move on higher some pretty good looking charts um, in lots of places now mickey d's look like it might start slipping to the downside but the last couple of days started pushing back up we have slipped past this trend just a little bit but we're not getting any major selling in here notice that price support right through there in the chart. So if we can find bullish inspiration in the market, I think there's every reason to believe that could push right on through. And then of course, look at those precious metals here today. Big push to the upside. If that um, continues, watch for that opportunity. We can pop on out here on gold and be looking at some new record highs if that push can continue. So watch that closely. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. Apologize there is no blog today, but I'm not sure everyone's going to miss it all that much. Y'all take care. Be safe. I'll see you right back here bright and early Friday morning. Have a great day. Everyone.